What a do, Scooby Doo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today the developers have released the 7.6 The Great Dreamer and the 7.5 bonus updates, so let's go ahead and dive into them. The Great Dreamer, this is the patch where Cthulhu is going to come out. So, if you did not see, Cthulhu is going to be the newest guardian to join the Smite God list. So, let's go ahead and take a look at some of his abilities. Cthulhu's passive is Prey on Fear. Cthulhu breaks down the mental fortitude of enemy gods applying stacks of torment with abilities and the final hit of his basics attack chain. On reaching four stacks of torment, enemies are afflicted by insanity. Additionally, Cthulhu gains magic power per nearby enemy god with insanity. Insanity duration is 20 seconds and the magical power is 25 per stack. Sanity Break Cthulhu sends out a terrifying blast of energy, dealing damage to all enemies hit and reducing their attack speed. Enemies hit by this ability also do reduce damage to Cthulhu for 6 seconds. This ability applies 1 stack of torment, 2 if the enemy hit is facing Cthulhu, or fears them instead if they are afflicted with insanity. Successfully consuming insanity permanently increases the base mitigation of this ability. Um, so the damage scale is going to be 90 to 270, plus 40% of your magical power. The attack speed slow is going to scale from 10% to 30%. The fear duration is 1.5 seconds. The damage mitigation is 20%. Cooldown 10 seconds, so it's going to be able to be used pretty frequently. And the cost is 60 mana. The Mire. Cthulhu summons a portal, creating a slowing field of Eldritch Mirror at the target location. While Cthulhu channels, the mirror continues to grow as the portal fires out two masses of corruption that hit and damage all enemies in the field. The first shot also slows enemies while the second roots them. Both hits applying one stack of torment. Canceling this ability early stops the mirror from growing or the portal from firing additional shots. The damage per shot is 50 to 230 with 30% 30 of your magical power. The slow is 10%. The corruption slow is 35%. The corrupted slow slash root duration is 1 second. The mirror duration is 3 seconds after ability cancel slash ends. The cooldown is going to decrease on a scale from 18 to 14. And the cost is going to go up as you level up this ability. Rushing Terror. Cthulhu creates two twisting projectiles at his sides as he unfurls his wings and charge forward, damaging, stunning, and knocking away enemies hit. This, the projectiles follow at a slightly slower pace but travel further, damaging enemies as well. Enemies hit by Cthulhu or the projectiles gain one stack of torment. The damage scales from 80 to 240 plus 40% of your magical power. The stun duration is 0.4 seconds. The projectile damage is 50 to 170 plus 20% of your project, uh, magical power. Cooldown is 16 seconds and the cost is going to scale from 60 to 80 as you level it up. Descend into Madness. So this is Cthulhu's ult. Cthulhu reveals his true form as he plunges the battlefield into Ryla a while. Any enemies caught nearby are damaged. In this form Cthulhu gains access to new abilities. Enemies near Cthulhu gain stacks of torment, increasing in pace if they are facing him. Enemies also suffer the debuff effects of Sanity Break, causing them to deal less damage to Cthulhu. And then there is... I'm not even going to pretend to try to pronounce that. Um, but the damage is going to scale from 160 to 340 plus 50% of your magical power. The max health is 30%. The duration is going to increase from 12 seconds to 16 seconds. The de debuff radius is 50, damage mitigation during intro is 80%, the cooldown is 100 seconds, and the cost is 100. So these are some of the abilities in Cthulhu's ult. Sever, Cthulhu swipes down at the ground beneath him, creating three large projectiles. These projectiles damage enemies and apply a stacking protection reduction debuff. This ability does not proc item effects. The damage scales from 130 to 350, plus 30% of your magical power. The protection reduction is 3% stacking up to 5 times. The debuff duration is 5 seconds. Cooldown is 1 second. The cost is 0. The next ability is Devastate. Cthulhu fires a devastating blast of uh, psychic energy that damages and knocks up enemies. The damage is going to scale from 140 to 280 plus 20% of your magical power. The cooldown is 5 seconds and it costs 60 to 80 mana. 
Transfuse, Cthulhu transfuses his own life force into an area around him, giving allies health, movement speed, and power. Enemies are also hit, taking more damage the closer they are to Cthulhu. This ability damages Cthulhu for 6% of his maximum health. If Cthulhu is below 20% health, this ability does not damage Cthulhu, but if all allies' effects are reduced by 50%. So the damage is going to go from 120 to 200, plus 20% of your magical power. Ally healing is going to be 14% max health. The power is going to scale from 20 to 40. Movement speed is 20%. Duration, 3 seconds. Cooldown, 6 seconds. Cost, 70. So from all of this, it sounds like you're going to want to charge up Cthulhu. Um, get a little bit of the uh, insanity stacking on the enemy. And then maybe ult. And then he just has a lot of things applying through all of his abilities. Let's go ahead and take a look at the skins that are coming up in the 7.6 patch. We have the Sin of Greed uh, Fafnir. And this kind of looks like a Hun Bats just from the beginning. Let's go ahead and play the audio. Slay the minions. Get their gold. Then crush their gods. Fun Pocalypse Hachiman. This one looks pretty cool. For every person I slay, I take something of theirs to keep as a trophy of my victory. <laughs> Miss Senshi Bologna is next. What does our club hunt, you ask? Ghouls, demons, monsters? The bigger the better. Then we have the striking Machina Ymir. I love the skin. I have existed with a single purpose. Aid and protect. Nautical Legionnaire Achilles. I am royalty, and they best show me the respect I deserve. And I think the best skin of this patch, the Freedom Retriever Anubis. Do you smell that? <laughs> Smells like this battle needs a bold, daring, and super cute leader. And then we have the Presidential Punisher Yanis with Abraham Lincoln's head. Heed my warning. The dead shall not die in vain. The Cosmic Horror Cthulhu. <laughs> Descending from the sky, lingering in the minds of the mortals, I wait, I watch, I hunger. So that was a long voice line. Next is the Ascended Cthulhu. <laughs> Okay, and then just the regular Cthulhu. So the bonus balance, which we will get to after we finish the 7.6 balance, is going to come out on June 2nd, and then the 7.6 balance is going to come out two weeks after that on June 16th. That is when Cthulhu, the Grim Omens Chapter 4, um, 1000 Fathoms Chest, and the new independent chest skins will come out. And then on June 30th, the bonus balance for 7.6 will arrive. So Project Olympus, we're going to kind of skip over. Same with the UI improvements. Bug fixes, they fix some UI. So Assault fixed an issue where players could not teleport to their friendly Tier 2 tower. Heimdall fixed an issue where Heimdall would be granted permanent vision of his opponents. Nike fixed an issue where Nike was not knockback immune while channeling barrier formation. Baba Yaga Fixed Elder Jin Baba Yaga using base FX on basic attacks. Fix an issue where she would T-pose while Titans were dying. I don't think they need to fix that. So game modes. Um, we're just going to read the changes. We're going to kind of skip over while they're changing them. Assist on enemy minion deaths. Now deduct tickets from the opposing team. Previously, his last hit was required to deduct the ticket. Visual changes, environment, and NPC art updates. So that's pretty cool. They're going to update Arena a little bit. And I think that uh, getting the assist on the minions should change how the mechanics of Arena play out. All environment art updated to the new underwater theme. Buff camps. Order, the abyssal minions and minotaurs. And then the chaos, the cosmic minions and minotaurs. Okay, so they're kind of redoing Arena around Cthulhu. Duel, they are going to reduce the level factor in respawn timers by 50%, increase match time factor by 30%, capped maximum respawn time to 45 seconds, 
I don't play much dual, but these sound like some interesting changes that should make it a little bit more competitive. Conquest, this might be worth reading. Um, in conjunction with some big changes to solo lane itemizations, we are increasing the impact that Totem of Ku has. This update and likely more updates in the future will come to incentivize aggression in the solo lane, and Totem is a key way of rewarding that type of play. Increase totem wide gold bonus from 20 to 25. Ooh, five extra gold. Um, so they're changing Warrior's Blessing, which is pretty big. This item has been a staple item in the solo lane for a long time and it's been reduced in the past, but it's still the go to. So now it no longer provides three flat damage reduction, now provides 10 magic and physical protections. And that's not as good as the flat damage reduction um, in most situations. Decreased health and mana heal from 40 to 25, so that's pretty big nerf. When the health and mana heal trigger, the target hit will take 25 true damage. This damage occurs only one per ability. So 25 true damage, that should kind of make it a little bit more smacky. You can do some relevant damage to the enemy pretty early on and then the evolved warrior's blessing has been adjusted to match the changes made to warrior's blessing baron's brew health and mana chalices underwent a change allowing their duration to stack with some fail safes built into the fountain to prevent abuse baron's brew functions similar to these items but works on the old system baron's brew will now match the health and mana chalices Baron's Brew now stacks in duration, but it is cleansed upon entering the fountain. This behavior matches health and mana chalices. So the katana. Junglers often come in two varieties. Those focus on rushing early penetration and power, while the others want to rush basic attack focused items. We want to make sure that there is a 650 cost choice for both. Katana builds into core basic attack focused items like Hasten Katana and the next item below. Golden Blade, so they decrease the cost from 700 to 650. Tier 2 and Tier 3 items cost the exact same. Golden Blade, decrease the cost to 2000, and then increase the attack speed from 15% to 25%. That's a good buff. I kind of have been sticking away from Golden Blade. It is good in its passive, but the stats you get from it aren't that great for the price. You could just build something else. So now that they're lowering the price and increasing the uh, stats, it might be a viable option. Movement speed. Movement speed can be a fun but par powerful stat. When it becomes too easy to stack and build, it can disrupt the pacing of not only rotating around the map, but combat pacing. We began seeing a rise in builds utilizing these items together, pushing the boundary on what an always on movement speed boost should be. We are taking the edge off a select few items to keep these builds from falling into the meme or frustration stages. So Traveler's Shoes uh, is getting decreased from 25% movement speed to 22. Talari's Boots is seeing the same nerf. The Winged Blade is getting the decreased movement speed from 10 to 7. Relic Dagger, 10 to 7. Toxic Blade, 10 to 7. And then Witch Blade is 10 to 7. So everything on that tree. That was giving you 10% movement speed is only going to give you 7% movement speed. And now to the god changes. So I'm losing cap. Fixed an issue that listed bees as doing 5 base damage. It is actually doing 9. And then for hive they decreased the cooldown from 14 seconds to 12 seconds. So you'll be able to put more hives up. Swarm the increase scaling from 80% to or 70% to 80%. This is a big change. AMC has great early game pressure and you can kind of build him ability based because his one smacks so hard. And then they're actually increasing the power scaling on his two. I'm sorry, I said one. So this is a pretty big change. It should make AMC a stronger candidate in the early game. Up next is Baba Yaga. Creeping Cabin fixed an issue where players were not colliding with the cabin. This is intent. Player movement should be blocked to prevent hiding in the cabin at all times, but projectiles should pass right through them. Baba Yaga is immune to backpedal and strafe penalties while inside her cabin. Blastoff now has knockback immunity and damage reduction during the pre-fire animation, 
So kind of some more fixes to Baba Yaga bugs and small buff in the fact that she's now not back immune in her three. Kronos, um, general, increased basic attack projectile speed from 100 to 110. Accelerate, increased initial movement speed from 15% to 20%. So they just reduced all the movement speed items, but they're giving a movement speed buff to Kronos. So I wonder if that will lead to him having a more significant role in the meta. Fenrir, brutalized, gets a decreased cooldown from 14 seconds to 12 seconds. Freya, increased basic attack projectile speed from 100 to 110. Ganesh, turn of fate, hitting a god with turn of fate provides two stacks of the debuff of the damage buff. Guan Yu's painless, when this passive is about to fade, an additional FX will play. Fixed an issue where some skins were missing the passive effect entirely. Isis is winged Gus. Increased damage from 30 to 110. That was the original scale and they're increasing it by 5. So now it's going to be 35 to 115. So a small little buff to the base damage that Isis does. Nemesis. Um, let's see if she's getting a buff or a nerf. Increase power gained and power lost from 5% to 7%. Okay, so a buff. Decreased max stacks from 4 to 3. Used to gain 20% in 4 hits. Now gains 21% in 3 hits. So new wall, her clay soldiers, increase charge range from 25 to 30, fixed an issue where clay soldiers wouldn't recognize players entering their line of sight for a significant amount of time, fixed an issue where clay soldiers would attempt to basic attack rather than charge, fixed an issue where clay soldiers would be stuck attempting to basic attack when they should be charging, clay soldiers now rotate much more quickly, allowing them to charge their targets faster, clay soldiers will now try to stay closer will now try to stay closer to their targets. So it sounds like just how in the last patch they kind of cleaned up the AI involved in Artemis's ult, they kind of did the same thing for new Os Clay Soldiers. Up next is Soul, and then in general, increase the basic attack projectile speed from 100 to 110, and then unstable manifestation, increase magical power bonus from 0.8 to 0.1, so now it's 20% to 25%. Terra, in general, is decreased pre-fire time for the first basic attack after her chain from 0.5 seconds to 0.3 seconds. Post-fire has been increased from 0.5 seconds to 0.7 seconds to ensure the basic is still at 1 second. Zongqi, Demon Bag, decreased max souls from 60 to 40, increased magical and physical protections per stack from 0.5 to 1, Total protections increase from 30 to 40, so that's a pretty good buff for Zonkui. And then that is going to be it for the uh, Great Dreamer 7.6 update notes. So let's go ahead and take a look at the 7.5 bonus update. So the new god skins. Caustic Skies new wall, let's go ahead and listen to that. Are you ready to feel the warmth? The Atom welcomes you. Then the Vamp Tech Camazots. Deities and legends belong to the past. Technology is the future. Spell Chanter Apollo. I command the primal forces of the universe! Then the Wave Rider Willix. Alright friends, I have so many new tricks to show you all. Just wait and see. And then the bonus balance live June 2nd. Um, Aphrodite Lovebirds, decreased magical power scaling per tick on heal, only from 12.5% to 10%, total decrease from 75% to 60%, back off is getting a decreased magical power scaling from 80% to 70%, so those are both pretty significant nerfs uh, to Aphrodite, the decreases in her power scaling is going to make it to where her bonus damage is not going to be as effective on these abilities, Persephone. Pomegranate Seeds, decrease the amount of damage Persephone does while in her undead state from 50% to 40%. 7.6, Persephone is now slowed by 20% for the duration of this effect. These specific, this specific change will occur when the full Cthulhu patch 7.6 goes live. It requires additional support that cannot be done through normal bonus balance. Raijin, the Taco Drums, is decreased base damage per shot on a scale of 120 to 240. 
to 100 to 240. So it's just that level five when you first get it, it's not gonna be as strong, but whenever you have level 20 and you have all your points into it, it's gonna be the same. Chablanque, the branching bola, decreased damage on branching bolas from 40% to 35%, increased mana cost per shot from three up to 15 to five up to 17. So it's gonna cost a little bit more mana to use this ability. Well, that is it for the bonus balance and all of the balances that were released today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. Um, please be sure to let me know which change you're looking forward to the most or which skin you like the best. If you are new to the channel, I upload six to seven times a week and I upload some gameplay where I review it and see what went right and what went wrong and try to add some commentary to help people shrinking the smite learning curve so if that is something you're interested in please check out some other videos and maybe subscribe to the channel thank you for stopping by i hope you all have a good day i'll catch you next time Bye bye